the uh, questions I get asked a lot is, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about Intel's mic architecture and why I should be excited about that. Maybe from people that are excited about GPUs or in general just high performance computing. So um, what I can tell you about it is uh, we're really excited because um, what we've done is build a very general purpose device. Um, one that's um, designed for data parallelism. So that's this, uh, what we call our mic architecture. So the excitement we've seen around um, utilizing um, different forms of parallelism in computing, including GPUs, really comes to home, comes home um, in our architecture because we're uh, highly programmable, a bunch of x86 cores, but we've designed it for data parallelism. Um, and our first product's gonna have more than 50 cores on it, and I can tell you that if you only run on one core, you're not gonna get much of the performance of the device. So this really is optimized for parallelism, and that's what's exciting about it. It's what's exciting about this whole look at things, including GPU computing. Um, I just think um, looking at what we've done, you'll find it more programmable and uh, uh, even more exciting on the performance side. We're not dedicating part of our design or our effort for graphics in this particular case. We're dedicating it for data parallelism. So I think when you look at a pure data parallelism workload, a real problem that you want to bring on, I think we have a huge advantage. You need to make a program scale. And that means um, as you get more cores, um, can you use them? And that's, that's parallel programming. We also scale another dimension, which is we talk about vectors. So you need to scale in vectors. Um, this is common to every computing device on the planet. GPUs, CPUs, coprocessors, anything have to deal with scaling and wider vectors. So nothing unique there. Um, the, uh, when you attach a device, um, it's not the central processor, but it's a coprocessor or it's a, a GPU, you have to deal with moving data back and forth. So that's um, a common to things that are called accelerators or coprocessors, and that's, I think, pretty well understood, but it's another challenge. And then finally, you have to program the device itself, and this is where we have a huge advantage. It's an x86 device. You can do anything on it programming-wise that you can do on any of our processors. It's just an x86 device. But I'd be, you know, I don't want to mislead. I don't want to say, gee, uh, wow, you, uh, more than 50 cores just a snap to use. If you know how to use 50 cores, it's a snap to use. If you don't, then you need to learn the basic things, and, and that's a challenge for programmers, but it's a challenge for any device of this sort. Um, I find it very exciting, that's my specialty. Uh, I spend a lot of time teaching it, and people I think are amazed how easy it is to pick up, but if you've not done it before, there's a learning curve there, but there's a learning curve with any parallel device to do that.